Hey guys, today we're going to make some pyridine uh, by decarboxylating niacin using the copper chromate I made in my last video. So this is a pretty simple synthesis, so I'm not really going to go into depth, it'll probably be a short video. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I bought 250 grams of niacin and I did my stoichiometry for 250 grams, but we'll see how much actually ends up being in here and I might have to adjust my calculations. but you need approximately two grams per mole of two grams of copper chromate per mole of niacin for the decarboxylation so I'm gonna load the niacin into the flask and then I'll put the copper chromate in there and then I'll shake it around and we'll set up for distillation alright so I've weighed my flask and cork before and after and it turns out I actually have exactly 250 grams so I don't have to do any extra calculations. So, as you can see, it's a very fluffy white powder. Uh, let's get the scale out of the way. And now we can add our copper chromite. So 250 grams of niacin is about 2.031 moles. So that would mean I would have to add 4.062 grams of my copper chromite catalyst. Just gonna shake this up, make sure it's nice and homogeneous. There are some bigger chunks of the copper chromate in here, but uh, the, the niacin will melt in the reaction, so it'll mix eventually. See, the color's changed to a more gray color, which is pretty nice. I'm actually going to let this sit for probably like 30 seconds to let all the dust settle. Maybe open the stopper a little bit. Let me push some of this down, some chunks in the top. Alright, now I will set up for simple distillation. Alright, as you can see, I've set up for simple distillation. Got my hot plate, round bottom flask, thermometer all the way up there. Uh, I've got my tubing. And in case you're wondering, this is how I circulate the water. This is an old Deschem box, and I just put some ice packs in there and a little aquarium pump you can get off eBay. And I put the lid on for insulation, and the tubing goes to the condenser. So we can actually plug that in right now, so let me take off my protective thing, plug it in, and here's our water coming up. And then we can start heating. And I will come back when it's nice and warm. Quick side note, I don't have a heating mantle or a sand bath or oil bath or anything like that, so a good way to heat up your flask is by using some aluminum foil and uh, just wrap it, wrap it around to keep the heat in. Now he's got a little cape. As you can see, the bottom portion of the niacin has begun to melt and has turned into this kind of dark green liquid. And uh, on the top, you can see a kind of fog of the niacin subliming, like a wind almost. And we're starting to get some droplets in the still head, but I suspect that's just water as the temperature is only about 60 degrees C. So just uh, in case you do this, this is what you'll probably expect to see. Just for fun, I thought this is my first time working with pyridine, so I've never smelled it before, and it has a pretty bad reputation smell-wise. So 
Um, I'm gonna put my nose up to that vacuum adapter and see what happens. This is my first time smelling pyridine. Oh. <coughs> bad. <coughs> it definitely deserves that bad reputation. Wow. It's, it's a sh very sharp smell. It, it does smell like rotting garbage. Um, not enjoyable at all. Definitely want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Wow. So the distillation has picked up quite a lot of speed. As you can see, we're getting a drop every second or so. And um, the temperature is only at about... You probably can't see that, but it's just under 100 degrees. Oh, no, you probably can. So my theory is that we're kind of steam distilling off the pyridine, as well as um, boiling it itself because its boiling point is 115 degrees but we're obviously getting some distillate over there so my theory is that we're steam distilling but I could be wrong that could just be some pyridine contaminated water but uh, nonetheless the temperature should eventually rise up to the boiling point of pyridine once all the water gets out so you know just a quick update still stinks of course I missed it but that big chunk of pyridine that was on top of the liquid just fell in now we got a real, real good amount of pyridine being produced, so. Uh, I also insulated with some more foil. Gotta keep the heat in. And the temperature is rising. It's almost to 100 Celsius now, so. Distillation's coming close to an end. And uh, there's some really nice, almost snow-like crystals forming on the walls of the flask. You can see it's actually sort of like snow. The crystals fall in every once in a while from the pyridine uh, dripping, refluxing in the flask. It's pretty nice. This is the volume of liquid I have left. It's very dark black liquid. Um, chromium waste. Be careful with this. But uh, in the receiver we have some quite pure pyridine. There's most certainly some niacin contamination but uh, we're going to redistill it anyway, so we'll get rid of that contamination. And uh, it's real nice crystals. So I've kind of developed a process as the distillation has gone on to efficify, to make more efficient, make my distillation more efficient. And uh, usually what happens is that I'll have the foil around the flask. And then the flask will warm up so much that the pyridine starts to condense up here in the uh, in the still head in the condenser, and then the niacin will sublime and coat the flask like this. And then all I have to do to get that all washed out, instead of using the hair dryer which takes too long, I've been uh, just turning the heat down for a little bit and taking the foil off so that the pyridine starts to condense near the top of the flask and kind of wash uh, all the niacin down back into the the liquid at the bottom. And that's proved effective. So this is the final state of the boiling flask. There's a little bit more niacin around the sides of the flask, but um, it's probably less than 10 grams, and it's not really worth continuing the, the struggle to recover that little bit. So I stopped the heat, and I'm going to let the apparatus cool down. And this is our product. It definitely has some niacin contamination, which is why we're going to redistill it after, but this is a good, um, probably 150 milliliters, and our theoretical is 160, so hopefully when we take the water and the niacin out, it will be close to our theoretical yield, and uh, yeah. This is our crude yield of pyridine, nice crystal clear liquid. And uh, I'm going to let it sit overnight. I'm going to set up the distillation for tomorrow. I don't have enough time today. So I uh, stoppered it with a clip and I'll leave it here. Alright guys, next day I got my pyridine here. And all we have to do now is set up for simple distillation and then we'll have our, our pure pyridine. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the distillation apparatus and uh, I'll probably time lapse that. So. Here we go. Wow. 
All right, there we go. And let me zoom in. I personally like to watch the condenser water go up through the condenser, so I'm gonna zoom in on that so you guys can see as well. There we go. And uh, now all I have to do is just turn on the heating down here. And uh, there we go. I'm not gonna film this pretty, you know, mundane. But uh, I'll come back when we're done. Here's our final product. A total of 88.6 grams of pyridine, which corresponds to a percent yield of 55%. Now that's not the best yield, but I don't need very much pyridine. So I'm not too worried about it, and I was a little bit impatient. So a lot of the niacin didn't actually decarboxylate. So I'm pretty happy with my, my product. It does have a little bit of water, I know, but that's also not a big deal because uh, none of my reactions that I'm going to be using this for are water sensitive. And I don't want to go through the effort of purifying it any further because it is just really bad to work with. It even made my hair smell like rotting garbage. So I had to shower after yesterday's run. But anyway, here's our product, Pyridine. If you liked the video, leave it a like, subscribe, whatever. And I'll see you next one.